What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video. And I know I said I wouldn't do this, but I got enough comments on my previous video about MRD format asking for just one duel in the format to show off how Exodia looks. So I decided, okay, I'll give the people what they want. So here is Exodia in MRD format. Now, if you missed my last video, MRD format is what I'm calling the sort of interim between Yugi Kaiba and Critter, where the cards for Metal Raider had released, but there was no update to the limited list from Yugi Kaiba just yet. This means that Sangan and Witch are both at three copies each, which is a real boon to the Exodia deck. I actually think Exodia is the best strategy in the format, and it's not even close. However, the thing that keeps it in check is that decks can play two card destructions, so I think the game sort of becomes a race between whether the Exodia player can pull off their combo or the opponent can find card destruction. Whichever happens first will likely lead to that player winning. In addition to the three Sangans and three Witches, Heavy Storm is also at three copies, which can hamper this deck a little bit. But if the Exodia player plays around Heavy, then it isn't as big of a deal as it could otherwise be. Another big difference is that Mirror Force is at three copies, which is a big boon to the Exodia deck and pretty much any stall deck in general. Mirror Force is just a very powerful defensive card, and its inclusion here just bolsters Exodia's strength. But before we dive into the deck breakdown and the duel itself, I just want to thank everyone for subscribing to my channel. We've reached over 300 subs at the time of recording, which was my goal for December. So I'm really happy that y'all made it happen, and I hope we can reach even higher heights in 2023. My goal for 2023 is to reach over a thousand subscribers, as that's a really, really big milestone. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you like the video, please be sure to give it a like. But with that out of the way, let's dive into this Exodia deck. So if you've seen some of my Exodia videos from Critter Format, then this deck shouldn't look too strange to you. You know, we've got all five Exodia pieces in here as our main win condition, and we're trying to use the Recruiter's Sangam, which is the Black Forest, to search them out very easily. The deck is like a combination combo and stall deck, which is a very, very unique version of it throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history, so I think it makes the deck look really, really cool. But in Critter format, it's sort of held back by there only being four Recruiters, which means that that only represents four piece searches, so you're going to have to draw into at least one piece naturally, unless you use things like Monster Reborn, potentially. Whereas in this MRD format, you have six recruiters, which I think greatly increases the consistency of the deck and makes it very tough to prevent the combo from going off. So of course we have all six recruiters maxed out here. I think pretty much every deck in this format would be playing all six, three Sangan and three Witches as it's just incredibly strong in pretty much any deck. We're also playing four 2k defenders, Aquamador, and three giant soldier of stone. Very, very powerful to wall up against your opponent's big offensive threats. We also have three thunder dragon to both thin the deck out and also enable you to tribute over your recruiters and grab pieces to hand, which can be very useful. Thunder Dragon can also trigger Last Will, which can enable you to get out more recruiters on field, which is very nice as well. And lastly, for the monsters, we've got two Magicians of Faith. You could maybe switch this out for Mask of Darkness to get back your Mirror Force and the like, or maybe even a Big Eye to just look deeper into your deck. But I like Magician of Faith here as it can get you back things like Monster Reborn, which can enable you to get a recruiter back online. It can also get you back Pot of Greed, which is of course very strong in this deck, and can maybe even get you back like Last Will, which can be used to enable your combos even further. For the spells, we've of course got the Power 5 Limited Spells, Change of Heart, Dark Hole, Monster Reborn, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, all incredibly, incredibly strong. You could maybe argue that Change of Heart is the least powerful in this deck, but I still think it's good. If you can take your opponent's Magician of Face, that can be very strong, and occasionally you will have to win through aggression, so this is a very good enabler for that as well. We also have two Fissure to act as removal. We could potentially play two Trap Hole here, as I did take Trap Hole out of the main deck, but with the inclusion of an extra heavy in the format, I think the Fissure is a little bit better. It enables you to ensure that you'll be able to get the removal online, as opposed to Trap Hole, which can die a bit too easily to Heavy Storm. We also have the two Last Will that I mentioned earlier. We have two Swords of Revealing Light to stall our opponent for a bit. There are three heavy in this format, 
But if your opponent doesn't draw them or doesn't want to use them, then swords can be very, very nice at stalling your opponent out for a bit. It can also combo well with your fishers. You've used swords to flip up an opponent's monster and then fisher it away. So swords, even though it's a bit worse in this format, given the third heavy, is still incredibly powerful. And then for the traps, we've of course got three mirror force. It's unlimited this format and it's crazy strong. Yes, heavy does counter it, but if you manage to pull it off, it can be a huge swing for you. We've got three solemn judgment, which is basically our only way to deal with card destruction. I guess you could potentially put in some magic jammers as well, and maybe if this format gets more explored by people who are curious about it, maybe they'll decide to include some magic jammers as well. But for now, we're just going with the three solemn as sort of a catch-all counter trap. I think it's very, very good, although it can put your life points in a bit of a vulnerable position. And lastly, we've got three Woboku, of course. This is the stall MVP. You can also chain it to an opponent's heavy storm, which is very, very relevant in this format, given, as I've said before, there are three heavies. Moving on to the side deck, we've got a pretty standard smokescreen side here. One cannon soldier, an extra magician of faith, if you want to go more all in on these. Two mass sorcerers, three mukamukas, three lodge in, one fisher, three heavy, and one trap hole. You may note that we don't have anything in this side deck to actually deal with Exodia ourselves, because I think if we're in the Exodia mirror match, we've just got to try and out combo our opponent a little bit. That's a pretty rough mirror match to find yourself in. But, you know, this is just set up for any other deck besides Exodia, basically. And I think it is quite a good side deck for that. We also have a fusion deck here, but we're not going to go into any of these monsters. It's just for the mind games. So that is the deck. Pretty similar to the version that you'll see in Critter, which you can find in many of my other videos. But I think that this version is a bit more consistent with the three recruiters. Let's see if it actually is in a game. Okay, we've got a game against History of YGO1, who is a regular on this channel. Always fun to have them on. And they're actually the one that came up with the idea for the name of Chaser Format, which is the next format that I'll be covering. So, always fun to have them on. We are playing Exodia. Unclear what they're playing. But I guess we'll find out. And they are back on the channel. So, very fun. We will be going second tier. Because we lost the Rock, Paper, Scissors. And this hand is actually pretty good. It's bad if they've got an early card destruction. But two Exodia pieces means that we only have to search three more to hand. And we've got plenty of defensive options here. So, they're just going to set two pass back to us. We draw Thunder Dragon, which is pretty good. Although, maybe not right now as we don't have any recruiters to tribute over. But it can thin out our deck a little bit. And if we do draw recruiters, then we can easily search the remaining pieces. We are just going to set Giant Soldiers, set a Solemn Judgment, pass back to them. The Solemn's just for if they have a card destruction. But if they do have a heavy and are trying to bait us into setting a bunch so that they can use the heavy, then we don't feel too bad about losing one Solemn. They're just going to pass back to us, though. It looks like they're on a bit of a slower deck, so we're just going to set the Mirror Force pass back to them. We want to bait them into using Heavy now, as we do have Swords, and we don't want that to get heavied. They're just going to pass back to us, though. We could potentially flip up the Giant Soldier and get in here, but if they've got a Trap Hole or a Mirror Force, then that's really bad for us, so I think we got to wait it out. They're just going to set another pass back to us. We draw a Fisher, which would be good if they ever commit a monster to board. But as is now, we've got seven cards in hand, so we're just going to set the Fisher. If they've got Heavy, that's unfortunate, but we'd have to discard it to the graveyard anyways if we kept it in hand, so uh, not really that big of a deal. They're just going to set one of their own pass back to us, and we finally draw a Recruiter. That's very nice. We'll set that pass back to them. And they're just going to set one of their own pass back to us. We draw Last Will, so we could potentially tribute out over the Recruiter and then Last Will out another Recruiter. And that represents two pieces. So we could just go for that. And we might want to. We are just going to activate the last roll first, see if that connects. And it looks like it will. They're not going to negate that with a Solemn or something. So we're just going to Tribute Set over the Sangan and get out a Witch. We're going to think about it for a bit because we could add a piece to hand. But if they do have card destruction, then that's a prime time to activate it. So we're just going to add a Recruiter to hand, and given how slow this game has been going, we don't really feel the need to get aggressive with our pieces, we can bide our time a little bit more. With that extra Recruiter in hand, that still represents basically another piece, 
it just means that our opponent won't have a clear card destruction target just yet. And that's a bit of a luxury that this deck can afford to do. You know, we've got plenty of searches for our pieces, so we don't really need to commit every search to an Exodia piece. Many great Exodia players in Critter also do this, where they won't necessarily search an Exodia piece with the recruiters to prevent their opponent from card destructioning early. But I think in this format especially, it's a very, very good thing to do, as you just got the extra searches in your deck, so you don't need to rush as much. And we're just going to pass back to our opponent here. They're just going to end their turn, discard a Mirror Force. So they probably do have a Mirror Force committed to field already. And Reborn is very interesting. That represents our third piece, but with given how defensive our opponent has been, you know, we haven't really had a way to get rid of our recruiters. So what we're actually going to try to do here is go a bit aggressive. Or I guess not. Uh, I think that we should go aggressive. I think that we should activate Raigeki and try and maybe bait out a Mirror Force by summoning out our recruiters and attacking in. You know, worst case scenario, they don't activate Mirror Force and we get in a ton of damage. Or we waste a Woboku. You know, I think that we should just go for it, but I guess we're just trying to bait them even more. Uh, I think this is playing a bit of a risky game, though. They're going to discard a Lodgin, and we're just going to activate Swords, flip up the Giant Soldier, and Fissure it away. So, I guess this is why we were waiting a little bit, because we wanted to clear the Giant Soldier without using the Raigeki. But... We're just going to flip up everything and try and attack in here. If they've got a Mirror Force, we basically win the game because we can just Reborn back a Recruiter, Tribute set over it with Thunder Dragon, and get that final piece to hand. If not, we get in a ton of damage here, and we feel happy about that outcome as well. So we're just going to attack in with everything here, and it looks like they're going to take it. So maybe they're not on Waboku, or maybe they just are choosing not to activate it to save it for a better point in time. But it looks like they're not going to take the bait. Kind of unfortunate for us. And we're just going to pass back to our opponent. I guess this is maybe an argument for maybe we should have reborn the Sangan and tried to attack in. Just because it's more damage on board and if they Mirror Force we'd still win the game that way. But I think what we wanted to do is bait them into activating the Mirror Force, thinking that it would be okay to let us search two pieces, as we likely didn't have three pieces in hand already. But unfortunately, they played it a bit cautiously here, and it was for the best, as we didn't win that turn. They're just going to activate Heavy Storm. We're just going to let that go through. We could Solemn that, but that gets us down to a very low life total. And we've got a big board of monsters on the field already. If they do, like, Raigeki our board away, or Dark Hole our board away, then we get two Exodia piece searches, which basically guarantees we win the game next turn. So, we don't really feel the need to do anything, and I think that is the right choice, that they did have a 7 tools to negate our Solemn, so there's no real point to doing that. They're just going to set one pass back to us, and we draw another piece. So, if they do Mirror Force us, we just win. Uh, it would be great if we had a Dark Hole here, but unfortunately we don't quite. We're just going to switch everything to defense, set the Raigeki, pass back to them, and they're going to activate ultimate offering in the end step. This is a bit worrying as it means they're likely on a very aggressive deck here. So, not the best to see right now, but if they do Raigeki or board clear us, then we do just win the game here. And we set the Raigeki as a bluff as, you know, they're unlikely to heavy just one back row on this board given that they've got two. It'd be very unfortunate if we lose it, but... We want a bluff that we could maybe have a Boku or something set. They're just going to set two and activate card destruction. Oh, that's really bad for us. We both lose the Exodia win condition and we lose Monster Reborn, which is one of the most powerful cards that we had in our arsenal there. And we will get to draw five, and those aren't a bad five cards to draw. But uh, that's, that's very unfortunate. We will just have to win through damage here if we can. And that ultimate offering makes it a bit difficult to win through damage. We can board clear, sure. But if they've got recruiters to add monsters to hand, then they'll be able to bring out those monsters in the battle phase and block us from getting in. We're not playing any heavy storms in the main deck as this is more of a stall strategy. So we don't really have a way to stop that ever. Which is very unfortunate. We will just go for the Raigeki anyways. We do have a Magician of Faith in hand if we need it. And they will get to search here. They're going to search out a Defender and a Cannon Soldier, which is a bit rough for us. We're just going to try and bait them into using up the Ultimate Offering. You know, 500 life points does get them a bit lower. 
and they're going to set one. We're going to attack it with, with Thunder Dragon in case it is not the Giant Soldier and they're trying to bait us. But unfortunately it is. We're going to take 400, set two, and set the Magician of Faith pass back to them. We're really not afraid of Heavy at this point because if they Heavy, they clear their own ultimate offering, which is very good for us. So we're just going to set our entire back row. And if they do have a Heavy, you know, this Woboku here, we can just chain to it. So we're not torn up about losing the Woboku and Swords. We're much happier about them losing the ultimate offering. We're going to pass back to them. If they've got change of heart for our Magician of Faith, that's very rough. But if they don't, we can Raigeki their board away here. They're just going to bring out a Lodge and attack into Thunder Dragon. Makes sense. It's the biggest beater we have on board. And Thunder Dragon will die. We draw Solemn Judgment, which is pretty nice. We're going to check their graveyard to see if they've discarded a Cannon Soldier. Because if that is the case, we can flip up the Magician of Faith, grab back Reborn, and basically win the game that way. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they have. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flip up Magician of Faith and grab ourselves a Raigeki. This clears away their big threats here and enables us to attack in potentially. We're going to go to battle, you know, try attacking in with the Magician of Faith. This does trigger an ultimate offering activation here. They're going to set one. And we're just going to attack into it with which it's likely Cannon Soldier, which we can't get over. But we're going to attack in anyways. And it is just a witch, so we can't get over that either. Main phase two, we're just going to switch the witch that didn't attack to defense, set a solemn, and pass back to them. They do have to pay 500 for the witch set. So it's good that we got that through. And they are going to activate a Raigeki of their own, which is pretty nice for them. It clears our entire board. But we will be able to get some searches here. So we are going to search out a witch. And we're going to search out a Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith can enable us to get back a Raigeki or something of that nature. And that is a very good summon up for them of the Cannon Soldier here. Chaining Ultimate Offering to the Raigeki to dodge around Trap Hole. Very smart. And they are going to use Cannon Soldier's effect here to tribute off the Witch. And we will take 500, and they'll also get a big beater to hand, which they can then summon out off of the ultimate offering. This is a bit of a concerning game state, and it only gets more concerning when they activate Reborn. It looks like we will be forced to Woboku here, most likely, this turn. But it if they've got a counter trap for the Woboku, then we're in a very rough spot, as we will have to Solemn that counter trap. And that will drop our life points down to a very low amount. They are going to tribute off the Witch with the Cannon Soldier, add another Cannon Soldier to hand. And they're actually going to activate Heavy here. We're going to chain Woboku. And they're just going to let everything die here. Pass back to us. Looks like they didn't have a counter trap for Woboku, so we feel really good about that. And we do draw another Woboku, which is very nice. If we can draw a change of heart, then I think we just win the game. Because we can change of heart their Cannon Soldier, bring out another monster, and just tribute off both. But unfortunately, we don't have the change of heart. I think what we want to do here is set the Magician of Faith, as we know their last card in hand is Cannon Soldier. So if they draw a change of heart off the top, then that's pretty bad, but that's a 1 in 17 chance. And we're willing to take those odds. We'll set the Magician of Faith, set the Woku pass back to them. And they draw the change of heart off the top, which is, you know, very, very nice for them. Uh, they will get to flip up the Magician of Faith here, and they'll be able to get back a spell. They're going to get back heavy just to clear a back row away, which I think is the smart choice. Unfortunately for them, we have Woboku, so we will be able to chain that to the heavy and not take any damage this turn. They'll pass back to us, and we do draw Change of Heart, so that will be the end of the game. We'll Change of Heart their Cannon Soldier and bring out a monster. Tribute them both off, 1,000 damage. So we did manage to win that game through damage, even after our opponent card destruction dust. Which I think kind of speaks to some of the power of this deck. Even if your opponent card destruction to you, you've got so many recruiters that you can just get more to hand, and potentially just out-aggro them through an abundance of monsters. But unfortunately that game, we didn't get to see Exodia really combo off and get all its pieces to hand early. You know, we were playing around card destruction the whole time, which I think we should have, but... Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the combo because of it. And so for game two, you know, we're supposed to side out of Exodia now, figuring that they probably have ways to deal with it. But I'm actually going to keep Exodia in the main deck, figuring that they may side out of their Exodia hate 
And even if they don't, I think the deck is potentially consistent enough to pull off a win if they're not expecting me to stay on Exodia. So we do side out a 2k defender for a Magician of Faith, I believe, because they are on Jiragumo as they showed. So we feel like the Magician of Faith may get a bit more value than the 2k defender. But other than that, I think I keep the deck the same. And we are just going to go into game two and hope that maybe we can pull off the Exodia combo this game. We will be going second, as we did win the first game, and this is a very good start. Dark Hole can enable us to trigger recruiters without our opponent having to do anything, which is something that we were really missing from last game. It looks like they're just going to set one and pass. So, in order to sort of smokescreen this fact that we're on Exodia again, we're going to bring out a Witch and just try attacking in here. Uh, Witch is very easy to beat over, but if they do beat over it, we can just add another recruiter to hand, and we do have a 2k defender for later. But we're just going to set one pass back to them. They are going to bring out a beater here and attack over the witch. So we will take 700 here. Kind of unfortunate. But not the worst thing in the world. We're just going to add a sand gain to hand to again mask that we are on the Exodia strategy yet again. Main two, they're going to set one pass back to us. And we draw last will, which is very nice as well. This can enable us to get more recruiters out onto the field. We're just going to set a giant soldier though and hope that they can't get over that very easily. They're going to attack in with the lodge in and it's giant soldiers so they won't be able to get over it here. They're going to pass back to us. We draw another recruiter which is very nice. We're going to set a sangan, set a solemn judgment, pass back to them. And let's see what they do here. They're going to attack into our sangan. And we're going to think about what we want to get here. But given that we have so much access to the pieces with Dark Hole and Witch in hand already, along with Last Will, I actually feel somewhat comfortable getting a piece here and just trying to race them. So if they get the card destruction first, they likely win. But if we can just outpace them in getting pieces, I think that we have a very good shot at winning here. So we've just got to hope for that to happen. Change of Heart is very nice, but not really right now. Um, we're just going to set the witch, pass back to them. They're going to switch their lodge into defense, pass back to us. Pot of Greed's extremely nice. We're going to draw two off of that. We draw Fisher and Thunder Dragon. We'll discard the Thunder Dragon. Add two Thunder Dragons to hand here. And we're just going to try and get aggressive. We're going to think about it for a bit. Tribute over our witch for the Thunder Dragon. They'll trap hold that, but that's fine. The main reason we were tributing over this witch is to add a piece to hand and also be able to activate last will here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to grab a witch. And even though we could beat over the lodge in ourselves, we've got seven cards in hand. So we're just going to activate this fissure to bring us down to six. And we're just going to attack in with the witch here. We feel very good about this. That witch will enable us to add a fourth piece to hand. And we likely will be able to find a way to get a fifth piece as well in the coming turns. They're just going to set one pass back to us. We draw Mirror Force, which is very nice. But unfortunately, it doesn't enable us to win here. So we're just going to Tribute Set over the Witch for a fourth piece. And we're just going to set one pass back to our opponent. Uh, if they draw a card destruction, they're in a very good position right now. But they have heavy, so that's very worrying for us. Uh, we're not going to Solemn that as no real point to. We've got the Woboku to chain to it anyways. And it looks like they're just going to set three pass back to us. We draw Woboku again, which is very nice. So we're just going to set the Woboku pass back to them. Let's see what they do here. They're going to Raigeki our board away, which is a bit unfortunate, but it looks like they don't have any aggressive follow-up here. And we draw Reborn. So we have Reborn Darkhold, which should win us the game here. We're going to Reborn targeting our Witch. And we're going to activate Darkhold. If they've got a counter trap here, they will be able to prevent us from winning. But if they don't, we will just win the game here. And that was a Princess of Sarugi. So very interesting side deck tech. But unfortunately, it will not help them. And we do just have the fifth piece of Exodia. And that is the end of the game. So I hope this game maybe illustrated how this deck is a little bit more consistent in MRD format. Having access to six recruiters is just insanely strong. And also having access to three mirror forces doesn't hurt as well. However, the format is still very much like Critter, you know, using the same card pool. So I probably won't feature too many more videos in it. I think that as of now, this is the only video I have planned to include in this format. Initially, I wasn't even planning on featuring a game in this format at all, but some comments on my last video expressed interest in it, so I decided to give the people what they wanted. If you'd like to see more videos in this format, 
or if you'd like me to just move on already, just let me know down in the comments below. I do try and listen to y'all the best I can and incorporate your feedback into these videos. But until next time, I've been Ben from YGO From Zero, and I'm signing off.